Hello everyone, this is Chris Mackey and this is your ninth Ladybug Comfort Tools tutorial. Uh, and in this one we'll be building off of something we did in the previous uh, tutorial, which, which you, you might remember is the, uh, the adjusting or accounting for solar, solar radiation and temperature studies. So essentially, I mean, we had here, just to refresh your, your memory, the, the uh, you know, condition of people in shade and, uh, and in the sun for New York for every hour of the year here. And we did this by doing a radiation study of a mannequin uh, to adjust for solar temperature. Um, so, so this is where we're, we're going to be using this now in a specific sort of design problem, which, uh, which I think a lot of, uh, a lot of people might, might be able to relate to. But we're going to be designing a shade for this little guy here. And little did you realize in the last video that when I was running this uh, was that I had planned all along, if I turn the preview on in these components, to have this guy sitting at a bus stop, uh, essentially. Um, and so, yeah, and or actually, I'm going to turn the preview off on uh, on on this these charts because we don't really need them anymore for now. Um, but yes, but we now have our little our little radiation study it was actually for a guy that was going to be sitting at a bus stop, uh, you know, close to this corner in in some city. Um, you know, actually, sorry, not some city. We're using the New York weather file, so in New York. And so now we can use this radiation study and these and the adjusted comfort. Um, that we've gotten by doing it uh, to essentially to design a bus stop shade for this guy. Um, and, and this is a problem I know I've encountered it a few times, I feel like, where, uh, where essentially, I mean, I'll be in a bus stop, at the, but, you know, the sun will be directly shining on me and it's very uncomfortable. Uh, it happened to me in Los Angeles a few times, I know. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, and it's, you know, and it would be, would have, I would have appreciated more consideration in the, in the placement of the shade. So, all right, so here's, here's how to do it. So we have our universal thermal climate index, and uh, and we can plug this into a a uh, awesome well what what I think is pretty awesome I guess I shouldn't be too self congratulatory, uh, but uh, but but well I mean I can't say the methods are mine though so I don't know I I, I it, but it is a, a pretty cool component that will uh, evaluate shade, um, at, based on a a temperature that that a person is feeling and the sort of balance or target temperature that you want the person to be at. Um, and so now that we have a, a essentially a temperature, which is our, you know, if I drop a panel here, um, for uh, universal thermal climate index, uh, if, if, we, if I, you know, I have a temperature that essentially represents, uh, you know, how the person is feeling in the sun, um, and, you know, and I could say maybe there's a balanced temperature of, uh, of, I guess generally people in the outdoors might like a, a temperature of, of, of uh, I mean, if someone's seated, maybe we can say 20 degrees Celsius. And so we can use this and the sort of setup of the, the bench and the, and the, you know, potential shade area here um, in order to design a shade for this guy. So, so let's, let's, uh, let's dive into this. So, I mean, as I said, I could hook up the universal thermal climate index to the temperatures. Um, and, and, well, and I can hook up uh, the balance temperature. We said, okay, maybe this person would like something around 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, for most most times of the year, um, and granted, I mean it's it's yeah. So it's 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 you should be careful because it's kind of assuming that even in the winter that 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 you know a, a sort of well, I mean I, I guess you were, we already have accounted for a lot of things like uh, like I mean the, the universal thermal climate index accounts for what what types of clothing people might wear in certain conditions and so on. Um, so um, so we have that we have the balance temperature, and then oh I, maybe I shouldn't have dragged this over here, but we need our our sort of bus stop seat and our and our potential shade area and these ones so our bus stop seat was will go into the sort of test region so that's the area that we're thinking of um, of essentially the, where where we know people will be sitting the target area um, and then we plug in the bus stop shade this this shade that's above above our our comfort mannequin uh, to the test shades um, and then so so we're almost done with all the required inputs. Um, oh, and by the way, if we didn't plug in the balance temperature, we'll, I guess we'll set a default to 20 Celsius. Yes, I, I put that in there. Um, but you may want to change that because, you know, people in different climates may have a, you know, a, a different preferred average temperature. Um, so, okay, so we have that. And now the last really thing that we really need in order to get this to run is a location. And the location is important because it essentially, um, it, it, uh, it, it makes sun vectors for us. And so essentially what this component is going to do is that it's going to project a bunch of sun vectors from this, 
from this little seat that we've we've set in here, this bus stop seat, um, and it's going to see where on the on the the shade these these sun vectors intersect, and then it's going to look at the temperatures at those hours that you know that 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 correspond to those sun vectors, and then it will look at how far those temperatures are from the balance temperature, and it will add all these up to sort of make a, a suggestion of okay, do you how how valuable is it to shade this part? Uh, you know, of the above the person, or or is it actually harmful? Maybe the person actually wants sun on them because it's very cold in the winter when the sun's in that. Okay, so we need our location data, and the location data we can get from our from our import EPW component that that has it right here, um, and essentially it just has some information on the latitude and longitude and everything that's in time zone and that's used to make the sun vectors. So we take that and we can plug that into the location input of our of our, our shade benefit evaluator and as soon as we do that you see these points generated these test points generated along the along the bench um, and and you'll see also that the shade above the person uh, has been divided into these into these cells and these b-reps um, and so well actually I'm going to actually turn off the original bus stop shade so we can see that more clearly so the thing is what, what's essentially going to happen now when we do this calculation is that the sun vectors are going to be projected from every single one of these these points um, and these will be sun vectors for for almost every you know for every hour of the year basically uh, well actually well I should I should uh, I mean it, it can be that but that actually will depend on the sky resolution which I get to in a second um, and so, so okay, so you can get a sense of essentially how long the calculation t is going to take, and, and you know, if you're projecting almost you know sun vectors from every hour of the year from all these points, I mean that's a lot of intersections to calculate. So you know, you can get a sense of how long it would take, and this is important because you can actually adjust. I mean, it's auto assigned a grid size to this this area above the person for you. Um, but the thing is, but you may want to want to set a grid size that's you know you want to maybe want a finer resolution because these are pretty coarse grid cells, and that's done by default to to sort of make the the simulation fast. Um, but let's let's I mean we want we want something maybe a little more uh, you know a little a little finer detail. So let's maybe make the uh, the cell shade size. We'll make it a uh, half a meter. Um, and you know it depends on your Rhino model units, but see plugging in that we should see okay the resolution on those shades uh, you know got better and the number of test points also really increased. So this is I mean you can see it's going to take a lot longer, um, but you know but we'll get a you know a fairly accurate simulation or you know a better sense of what's going on here because of that. Um, so let's see what else do I have to explain. So you can also hook up if there's context that could block certain sun vectors, like a building across the street. I mean that may be something important to to factor in this calculation uh, because that could end up shading this person or or or, or so on and so forth. Um, and so, but I mean in this case we we won't we won't deal with that. You can change if if your project north is different than the you know the north the the y-axis in the Rhino model. You can change that. And now okay now the sky resolution thing. So the sky resolution is essentially and you'd see in the description here the essentially the number of times that the sky patches are divided from the original uh, Turgenza dome. Now Turgenza being a scientist who originally came up with uh, you know the method of, of dividing a sky into these equally spaced uh, patches and which is used in you know virtually almost uh, a lot of a lot of the daylight and radiation uh, simulations these days um, or, or I shouldn't say virtually I mean there are many there are many different types of daylight simulations but in a lot of radiation simulations it's used um, and so the thing is you can set it to it's the, by default set to zero for a very fast calculation but you you will find actually when that happens that you'll get a slight I mean you'll get the general right shape of, of the shade for this but it but um, you know but it'll be a little patchy in some places and you know won't necessarily be as as accurate as increasing the sky resolution so I mean so the thing is I mean it's it's yeah it's sort of just a kind of like a you know an accuracy um, um, you know, check. And the thing is, you, uh, when you run it up to a sky resolution, so it divides the sky patches 0, 1, 2, and by the time you get to 4, um, you know, your sky's at such a fine resolution that we just actually run it for every single sun vector of the year. Um, and that gets you the most accurate, like, smoothest uh, thing that, that, that you, can, you can get with, uh, with this type of simulation. But it can take a while. Um, but you know what? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fast forward it for, through you guys. I mean, you may want to do a, a, you know, a less, less fine resolution, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run it for a uh, sky resolution of 4. Um, so we can get a nice smooth mesh at the end of this, and I'm just I'll just wait it out. Um, and you have so a few other things like you know you can delete the the, the parts that aren't intersected by the sun uh, and do a bunch of other things. Uh, I would strongly recommend as in the last uh, last um, 
uh, uh, tutorial setting parallel to true to true so I mean such that it's it'll essentially do that very long intersection uh, calculation in, in parallel for you um, so I'm going to do that and I would suggest if unless you're running other important things on your computer doing that as well um, and then uh, and then we're pretty much ready to, to set uh, the run it to true um, and so I'm going to do that right now and then I'm going to going to fast forward for you guys all right see you on the other side Okay, everyone. Our shade benefit evaluation has has finished running. It didn't take too long. It was it was uh, about under a minute, uh, even though I did run it with this 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 higher sky resolution here. Um, and so we can see now, if we zoom out, that we get uh, in in place of our, our sort of uh, uh, original test shade, we get now a a a shape that shows us in either colors of blue, shade desirability or shade harmfulness. And so the thing is, you can you can actually kind of see if I I believe uh, let's see oh, I have a sun path over here for for the climate um, that that well actually well let me see I'll hook up the same exact location here so that we uh, we we essentially have a sun path here but you can see essentially it's telling us based on the where the sun vectors are when the sun is high in the sky that's when it's it's you know it gets pretty uncomfortable and you really want to shade and and that's why it's colored in blue there where there's shade desirability. But in the winter, New York can get pretty cold, so that's why in these lower sun vectors, uh, like you see here, it's actually harmful to the person to shade. The person actually would probably like, as, as crazy as it sounds, a little bit of sun just because it's so cold out um, at, at those hours of the year. Um, so, now, so now we can use this now, we sort of understand, we know this blue area is the, is the real prime area where, where a person sitting at this bus stop would want shading. Um, and I know it's a little, it's, you know, it's a little splotchy, and that could always be improved with, uh, with, uh, you know, by increasing this grid size and waiting a little bit longer. Um, but you know, it's, it's, I'd say it's good enough for our purposes right now. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually now dive in. We have another component here, which is the last one that I'm gonna show you in this video, um, that is meant to essentially take the, these, this shade mesh, this colored shade mesh that comes out of the, the shade benefit evaluator, um, and the shade net effect, and give you a, an an optimal sort of optimized shade based on 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 this this simulation um, and so to do that it's it's relatively straightforward I mean you could I mean you could have done it with with uh, some some uh, grasshopper some of the native grasshopper components anyway but this makes it a little easier so if you drag and drop this honeybee optimal shade creator if you drag that and drop it onto your canvas um, and then all you need to do is hook up the shade mesh um, and the shade net effect um, and then you see already it's selected out the best the best parts of the shade um, uh, for uh, for us to sort of make as a bus stop county bee. But it seems like we actually I mean it's the, the default of the, the of the percent that it's keeping is is a little small. We can actually make that a little larger because uh, because we probably want to shield this person from rain anyway. So all right, so let's maybe up this percent to keep, um, you know, and, and you can see by default if you just hover over it, it tells you it's by default twenty five percent. So let's let's hook it up. Uh, let's boost it up maybe to fifty percent and see. Okay, all right. Now we're getting more more uh, more of the important areas. And you know, and you can keep increasing this further and further. Um, of course, you know, it's kind of it, it was a little splotchy in that you know that would be helped by having a, a finer grid size. Um, but uh, but essentially, yeah, you're getting now essentially some geometry of uh, that that essentially shows you where where is such a person on this bus stop wants to be shaded uh, and then you can you know use this as a starting point to then make your 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 shade for this this person and of course I mean it's going to be different it's it's oriented towards the sun path in this direction but it's clearly it's different depending on what's you know the directions of the street and all these other things so so uh, so it's meant to be used and, and applied to a bunch of different cases and the one last thing I'll show you is that you'll see so the way that it's actually evaluating the shade because I know this is actually a little you know I'm going to turn the sun path off here so we can see this a little more uh, clearly but the way that it's doing it is it's got degree days per meter squared so I know it's, it's, it's a little confusing but essentially what it's doing is these are degree days away from the balance temperature uh, essentially, and those those are being summed up um, on an hour by hour basis, and and that is just divided by the 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 uh, area of each test cell. So that's why it's like that. And I know it's it sounds a little confusing, but but it actually it's um, you know it's 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 a it, it is it is a valid way of trying to assess this. Um, and uh, and if you if you take a little bit of time to think about it, it, it you know it can can kind of click together. 
Um, so okay, and one last thing I'll just show you is that instead of using a percentage to keep, you can also use a level of performance. So essentially you select a certain level of degree days that, that you know, degree days per meter squared that you think is useful. Um, so maybe we'll delete this and maybe we just want everything that's above, uh, you know, like 15. Uh, degree days per meter squared. We could hook that up and you know now it's just selecting those best cells where where we're getting that those 15 um, and you know this is more useful for um, for for when you have multiple shades that you know that you can plug into here uh, but uh, so all right so that is that is your shade benefit evaluator and we've taken this all the way from uh, from the start of comfort basics now all the way through to uh, to the design of a shade based on comfort um, and uh, I hope I hope you found all this useful. There'll be there'll be more videos to come in the future if uh, if uh, you don't see them on the playlist right now. Um, and uh, and thanks for watching, everyone.